All right, guys, what's going on? Jordan here for another episode on the Digital Marketing School. And in this episode, we're going to quickly go through how to set up custom audiences and lookalike audiences on Facebook for your Facebook ads and Instagram ads. All right, so let's just go ahead and jump right into the screen share. All right, guys, so now that we're in, basically all you need to know or where you want to start at, I guess, would be right here in Facebook Business Manager, business.facebook.com. You sign into your account and you go over, you click this top button and then you're going to click audiences. It's going to load this page that I was just on. Um, and all you're going to do is, I guess really, let me preface with audiences is where you're going to have your audiences stored, whether they be saved, lookalike, or custom audiences. Saved audiences are ones that you build based off of interests, um, demographic information, stuff like that. You can see all of this demographic information, interest information, stuff like that. Or, um, actually, let me get to the one we're going to use. Because we're not going to use those for the examples. We'll actually use the ones that I use for the digital marketing school. So um, you can see right here we have our interest groups. Um, we have all of our other saved audiences that we build off of those interest groups where we break them down even more. Um, we have lookalike audiences, custom audiences. So we're going to go through the difference between uh, custom audiences and lookalike audiences in this. Basically, all you need to understand, sorry, I've got a hair floating around right here. Um, <laughs> uh, all we're going to do is we're going to look at custom audiences and lookalike audiences. So let's go ahead and start with custom. All right, we're going to start with creating a custom audience. Now, let's just look back here at the, uh, at the document really quick, and we'll go through some uh, basically uh, pre-information. So custom audiences, you remember when we installed the Facebook pixel back a while ago, right? Well, this is where you're actually going to use the custom audiences. They use the data collected by the Facebook pixel to build targeted audiences of people that have already um, engaged or visited with your uh, Facebook uh, page or your website uh, for your, your actual website. Because remember, we installed that pixel on the website. And you're going to use this data to make your ads uh, much more effective um, because you're going to. So really what you want to keep in mind is custom audiences are used on uh, to generate basically retargeting traffic or they're used for retargeting purposes, right? Because you're building these audiences based off of people who have already engaged with your brand in some form or fashion. Okay. So again, this makes it much better for um, ROI. You're, you'll have a lot lower cost per click. You'll have um, higher click-through rates because they've already seen their, the ads. Your cost per thousand should be uh, relatively lower or the same. It shouldn't go up. Uh, so that's some good things about custom audiences. And again, they're mostly used for retargeting purposes. So you'll want to make sure that the messaging is similar to something that the audience has already seen before. So see this study performed by Facebook, and we'll just open this up really quick. This was a really cool study that Facebook did um, on types of ad combinations. So you can see right here, they ran a test with one of the companies that's partnered with them, and this is the results that they got. So they ran a bunch of different types of ad combinations to see what was going to work the best, and these are the top performing types of ads. So you can see they had a static image followed by a video. So this video was probably a retargeting ad. They had a static image followed by another static image and then a video followed by a static image. So you can see these are the types of combinations that people are using. This initial image right here or video, uh, mostly images, but the initial image or video is going to be that cold traffic getting them involved. And then this next stage where it says phase two after four days. So you run phase one for four days and you run phase two four days for four days after that. But this is going to be a retargeting ad where, you, you know, you've already built that audience. Now you're sending them stuff again to try and get them to convert again. And you can see these are the most effective. The uh, static image followed by another static image was the most effective at driving visits to the marketer's website. It increased visits by 1.7 times compared to the control. All right. So and that's all you guys really need to understand. This is from this document, at least it's just a study showing how to build your ad strategy. All right. So going back to this, um, you know, just again, make sure that you're building these out the right way and that you put some planning into it, because if you if you're not putting planning into it again, you guys are missing or you're dropping the ball. 
All right, so types of custom audiences. So here are the types that you can focus on and that I would recommend focus on focusing on. So number one, first and foremost, people who have purchased your product. Um, and the reason why you want to create this custom audience, uh, we'll get into it in the next part though, is you can build a lookalike audience off of it. So we'll get into that, but you can build that audience of people who have purchased your product and also upsell them new products or try and get them to buy more, right? That's the purpose of building that. You already know they love your brand, so now you can resell to them. Uh, specific lists of customers, so if you already have a customer list, you can download that from your website via their email, name, phone number, last name, whatever, um, and upload that into Facebook so you can see, let me get back to it, um, close that out, I believe it's, yeah, so you can, right here, you have customer file, you can upload a customer file, you can do it based off of website traffic, so people who have visited specific web pages, you can do it off of app activity if you have an app, and this is their newest one is engagement, so you can do it with people who have engaged with your videos, who have um, submitted a lead form, uh, who have engaged with your Facebook page, whether that's a post, the actual page itself, anything like that. You can do your Instagram profile and an event. These are all ways that you can build custom audiences, again, for retargeting purposes. All right. Um, so filled out a lead form if they added something to cart. So all of these next ones added to cart, initiated checkout, viewed a page on the website, um, even purchased a product. All of these are going to be related to, let me go back this website traffic conversion if you you and you have to set up conversions which we'll go into in another episode uh, but this this is going to be the objective where you track people who have been to the um, thank you page or who have uh, added something to cart and didn't check out you know all of that information is what you're going to be able to utilize by using this objective right here or using this objective for the custom audience um, and then again, I said app activity and then people who have engaged with Facebook or Instagram page, we just went over those. So that's it. I mean, I'll, and we'll go through a really quick example. So if I wanted to set up somebody who had visited my website, I'm going to pick my pixel. So this is my rest and bar agency pixel. These are my two pixels for my digital marketing school. I have my click funnels pixel here. I like to track them separately. Um, and then my actual website pixel here. You could always put them in one pixel. It's up to you how you like to track. And then just keep in mind all of these up here, any, that means that it can be any of the following. So we'll go through that. And then all means it has to be all. All right. So digital marketing school pixel, I can do all website visitors in the last 30 days. I can do people who have visited specific web pages. So if they have visited, say like a checkout page and they didn't uh, submit the uh, or purchase, you can actually do so this, you would select the people who have visited specific web pages, you would enter in the URL for the checkout page, and then you're going to refine it further, right? So to refine it further, we want to exclude, and then we would use the same pixel and then put the URL for the com order confirmation page. So if we wanted to get like retarget people who if we wanted, so say we ran a campaign and we collected a bunch of emails, right? And now we have a list of 500 emails, all right? And out of that, we want to get the ones who didn't purchase the course or product or service to buy it, right? So what we'll do is we'll put in that thank you page or that checkout page URL right here for that pixel, for the website pixel. And then we'll take the website pixel again and we'll say exclude any Facebook people who have visited the uh, or the um, order confirmation page. Because if they've reached the order confirmation page, that means they purchased it, right? All right, so we're going to exclude anybody who's reached that page. That means now we have an audience of people who have made it to checkout but never bought the product in the last 30 days. You could do it to 180. I believe the most you can do is 365. It might be 180. Yeah, 180. Yeah, you can see right here. Value must be less than 180. So you can do up to three months or, sorry, six months. <laughs> six months. Um, on the that that targeting and that's all you want to do you want to you know work with the best combination possible and sometimes it just takes some testing to see what combinations are going to be best that's always one that you use the one I just mentioned where they made it to check out but didn't purchase that's always um, a type of audience that you want to create right there um, if you wanted to do it with engagement again it's super simple so we'll go say our Facebook page you select your page and then you select what you want. So anyone who visited the page, people who engaged with an ad or a post, people who engaged with that call to action button, so like a sign up, learn more, all of that. People who sent a message inquiring about services or products maybe. And then people who saved your page or um, post. 
Those are all important objectives that you can include during 65 days and then you name your audience. Very, very simple, right? Custom audiences aren't very difficult. You don't want to overcomplicate them, but you do want to make sure that you're tracking all the right stuff. So this is going to be the most important one, the website traffic, because you're able to build audiences based off of people who visited your site. Um, and those are going to be the highest converting people because they are the ones who, if they make it to your site, basically just understand that they're interested in some form or fashion. They might not buy, but they are still interested, which is good, which means they're more likely to buy. All right, so that's it for custom audiences. Again, super simple. Now let's get into the next part, which is lookalike audiences. So lookalike audiences, these audiences are also a great way to find new traffic. Okay, lookalike audiences are built from custom audiences, so they're based off of traffic generated on, on your Facebook pixel. Basically, they take all of the interests, demographic info, behaviors, etc., and find other people on Facebook or Instagram that have extremely similar interests and general behaviors. They can also be built from trafficking, traffic or engagements with a specific Facebook or Instagram page, like custom audiences, lookalikes, are generally pretty effective because they are built from data based on people who have already expressed an interest in your site or in your page. All right, so types of lookalike audiences are built from Facebook pages or Instagram pages and then built from custom audiences. So we'll go back really quick and we'll just take a look. So if we want to do a lookalike audience, all we're going to do is you select the audience up here that you want to work with. All right, so you can see these are all of my audiences right here. I have all my custom audiences and then all of my pages right here that I could connect it with. So say I wanted to do all of my traffic, basically all of the traffic who have visited my website, but they haven't purchased, right? Say I wanted to build a lookalike off of that to start generating new cold leads, right? Or finding new cold leads. That's all I would have to do. I'd select the source, which was, again, a custom audience that we built prior to. And then we're going to select the location so we can select by country. I don't know if you can do by state. Let's see if we can do by state. Nope, that's going to. Uh, so it's a lot broader. These are a lot broader. So you're not going to use a ton of lookalike audiences unless you have like a regional area or a, a national area that you can compete in. Um, just because of the fact that Facebook hasn't gotten it narrowed down to local areas yet, I'm sure eventually they'll do it to where you can do by a city or something like that. But for now, this is really what it's for, is for larger um, companies that have larger reach. Okay, so we'll just say we'll select a country. We'll do um, United States. All right. Now you can see our audience is about 2.1 million. The more you add in, the larger it's going to get. And you really don't want it to get too large. Like you can see, we just added, so it's 2.3 now. Um, you don't want to do it too large. So I try to focus and segment countries out uh, one by one. So I won't put like United States with like uh, Europe or any country in Europe. I would segment those out and do them separately. But this is what you can see. So this is basically saying that Facebook is going to find all of the people who have visited my website in the last 180 days and haven't purchased um, and then build a lookalike audience off of them using the top 1% of all of my traffic. So they're going to go out onto Facebook's database and say, all right, here's a list of people who have similar interests and behaviors. We're going to send those ads to them. And that's all it is. All right. Uh, obviously, the best one to do here is going to be from people who have purchased. I'm still building my list. That's the only thing that sucks about this. So you have to have 100 people who have purchased a product in the same country. Um, it can't be based off of, you know, it, it can't be someone who purchased a product. Uh, or you can't have an audience of 100 people that have all purchased from different areas, which can make it a little difficult in the beginning. So I'm still building to the point where I can use this for purchased. That's why I'm using not purchased because um, and I actually have a lead generator, so I could use my lead audience, which would be, where is it at? Uh, it's on here somewhere. There we go. All funnel leads. I can use this because they've actually submitted their email to me. So this would be a lot more qualified. This is actually what I'm using right now to find cold traffic until I get my purchased. And then that will even optimize it. Uh, for my pixel even better. So that's pretty much it. That's building a custom audience. It's not any more complicated than that. You're going to want to, you know, build them out uh, for as many possible options as possible. What I like to do, I do a four day. Um, people who haven't engaged in 12 days and not purchased. People who have engaged uh, in the last 30 days and not purchased. And those will all get different messages. So when I'm creating an ad, I'll create an ad for all visitors who have 
been to my site in the last four days and not purchased. I'll send them a retargeting ad specific to those visitors. In the last 12 days, I'll send them a different ad saying with different messaging, all of that, trying to get them re-engaged. And then with 30 days, which is even higher, they haven't been to my site even longer. That's where something, maybe I'm trying to give them something free or give them a, a free value offer or something like that to get them re-engaged with my, with my audience, right? So that's it. That's all these ads are. Don't overcomplicate them. As I always say, it is actually super simple to build these out. You just want to think about what type of audiences you're trying to reach. And then once you reach them, so there's two stages, right? You have cold, tra well, there's three stages. You have cold traffic, right? So once you get cold traffic to submit their information, now they're warm leads or hot traffic, right? And then you want to take those warm leads. And then once they purchase, then you're building a list off of those people and those are hot leads. And you're able to basically retarget audiences or find new audiences on Facebook uh, using people who have already purchased your products because Facebook will take all of that data, um, cross-reference it with people they have in their database, and then show those people ads. So that's it. I hope that clears up a little bit more for you guys on uh, custom audiences and look-like audiences. Again, they're really not that difficult. Uh, if you guys have any questions, as always, leave them in the comments section below, and I will get back to you as soon as I can. So for now, Serial Entrepreneur out.